It is summertime. That means it is boating time. And along the shore of Connecticut, of course, and along all the lakes and the rivers, plenty of people out this time of year. And there are a lot of things that those folks need to look out for to stay safe when you're on the water. We've got you back here on Good Morning Connecticut with some boating safety tips from none other than the United States Coast Guard, specifically in the person of Ensign Marty Betts joining us now to tell, to tell us uh, what to watch out for this summer. Ensign, thank you so much for coming along, looking very sharp and military this morning. Thank you. I must say, um, it, it's hard to know where to begin except with what I think is so important is life jackets. So often during the course of every summer, we talk about people having mishaps on boats and they didn't have their life jackets on. To me, it's the equivalent of riding in a car with your seat belt on. It's not perfect, but it's the best chance you got should something go wrong, right? I think that's the perfect place to begin. Um, it's the most foundational piece of safety gear you can have on a boat. And, um, you know, the, the data bear out that survivability is increased by about 85% when you're wearing your life jacket on the water. One of the reasons being, obviously, that if something happens, God forbid, and you're knocked unconscious, you can stay afloat in the water. When, though, should a person feel okay about taking their life jacket off? In other words, if you're out, the boat is stopped, everybody's fishing, should your life jacket just simply stay on from the time you leave until the time you get back to land? Well, certainly it's a judgment call. You know, um, if, if you're out in the water and you're transiting anywhere, uh, that's, that's a great time to wear a life jacket. Certainly any child or anybody who cannot swim or isn't a strong swimmer should be wearing a life jacket during times of transiting, during times of rough weather. Uh, Any time that um, the sea state or the traffic becomes a little more complex than the operator might feel um, is, is normal or feel comfortable with, then, then you should ask his passengers to wear, his life, wear their life jackets. All right, let's talk about that other thing which makes people do things like think they can take their life jackets on, and that is consuming alcohol uh, out on the water. Many people, you know, boating equals drinking and vice versa. How do you get a grip on that? What do people need to keep in mind as they head out with their cooler full of beer? Well, alcohol is still the, the leading causal factor in, in marine-related deaths, and that's unfortunate. Uh, it's certainly something that's very preventable. Uh, unfortunately, you know, boating is a recreational activity. It's summertime. Everybody likes to be outside having a good time. Um, but it's very important to realize that, that boats are far less maneuverable than, than even automobiles. And the traffic... Uh, the traffic is more complex. Right. The, the roadways, if you will. See, that's what people don't think. They think, well, I'm heading out to the wide open spaces. What could possibly go wrong? Right. Well, unfortunately, we, lived in the mo we live in the most densely populated area of the country, too. So it's not only you out there in the wide open spaces. There's thousands of other boaters out there, too. And it's important to remember there are laws about drunk boating, same as there are about drunk driving. Almost identical. And you and people will get, so to speak, pulled over. And they will do breathalyzers and the procedures just the same, right? Absolutely. If you're found to be uh, boating under the influence, your voyage will be terminated. Uh, you'll be towed back to shore, and the uh, the state authorities will deal with you there. It's a bad way for the day to end. It's an unfortunate way. Absolutely. You you wanted to talk a little bit today about something we don't hear as much about in safety uh, discussions, and that's paddle boating, something that's very fun uh, for the young ones, but obviously a kind of boat that goes much slower should it get out into traffic. Well, paddle sports is, is a really uh, uh, emerging uh, demographic within, within the wreck boating community, and, uh, and it, it can be very dangerous. Uh, boats like that, like canoes and kayaks, are far less maneuverable. Um, their, their profile in the water is, is much more diminished. They're not as visible in the water, uh, and they're less stable. And, and so they, they can be their own unique danger in the waterways. Any final thoughts? We've got about 30 seconds to go here. From your experience that you see each summer, what should people keep at the foremost in their mind as they head out on the water? Well, uh, plan appropriately. Uh, Sam mentioned earlier about the small craft advisory. Weather can creep up at any time, uh, and so you need to plan appropriately. Be, be aware of your conditions uh, and, and only operating conditions in which you're comfortable. And then, of course, safety gear. Always, always wear your life jacket. Uh, when you feel it's appropriate, certainly when transiting, when, when, uh, when rough weather arises. Yeah. And make sure you have other plans in place. Uh, a radio, a VHF radio is, is a good piece of equipment to have. And, and a float plan, too, can be useful. And, and that is simply letting someone on land know where you're going, who you're going with, and when you intend to be back. All right. That wraps things up very nicely. Ensign, thank you so much. My pleasure.